Good day, people. How are you going? I'm um, just bringing you a quick video today. I'm going to show you how to do something awesome. I've got myself a set of 14 inch wheels for the Subaru and some tyres. The wheels come with some ratty old tyres on them and I'm going to take them off. So, this is what I've got. I'm going to uh, paint these rims up. I'm going to take the tyres off, get rid of them. And I've got some brand new tyres at home. And I'm going to show you how to break the bead on a tyre using a high lift jack. This is something I've done many, many times before out on the tracks when I've got um, mud, dirt and gravel in the beads. The uh, old patrol rims were really bad for doing that. So it's something I'm quite familiar with. So we're going to start by letting the air out of that tyre. Okay, best way to do this is to take the valve core out the middle there. Um, the reason for that is because when you put the high lift jack on there and push down, you're obviously going to get a build up of pressure. So if you've removed the valve core completely, it just allows the air to all escape as you're breaking the bead. Um, if you're in the bush, it might be a wise idea to let the tyre down this way. Just by depressing the centre before you remove the valve core. Um, otherwise it's going to be under pressure and you might run the risk of it just shooting out. And if you're not carrying spare valve cores, that could be a problem for you. The best way to do this is probably to use a high lift jacking point on your vehicle or even better on somebody else's vehicle. If you've got a steel rear bar, they're obviously in the sides on most of them. Um, this is my dad's patrol. I did actually try breaking the bead on the last one by lifting it off the back of the Subaru, but instead of the jack pushing down and breaking the bead, the Subaru went up. So I had to use um, my dad's patrol to do that. If you've got a race style towing hitch, you can pull the tow bar out and put the high lift jack in there. That's probably a safe way to do it. This has one of those locking hitch pins on it and I can't find the key. So I'm gonna do it off the tow ball. Um, it's a flat surface and the patrol's got the brakes on and the wheels chocked because we've been doing work on the front. So the patrol's not gonna go anywhere but um, doing it off the underneath of that tow bar in the bush, probably not the safest way to do it. Another thing worth noting is if you've got the gravel and all of that in your bead and your tyres leaked, gone flat overnight, you're obviously going to be taking that off your car to break the bead. And hence it's probably not the best idea either to jack it off your car to break the bead because you've got a wheel off and if that high lift jack slips, the whole car goes down. So you might want to do that off a mate's car instead. To put a high lift jack into lifting mode, you grab this lever here and you pull up. So that's ready to lift now. Now you want to position the base of your jack as close to the rim there as you can. Pull the handle down, shuffle it around a bit to get it correctly located on the toe ball and then just crank the handle. Once you get tension on that jack, you want to keep your face and your body as far from the handle as you can because they're good at coming back up and cracking you in the face. Standing on the tyre, just keep going like that. Now as for how good this is for the tyre, I don't really know. I did it to my old Coopers oh, probably 10 times over the life of the tyre and they seemed okay but somebody might have a legitimate reason why this is bad. Hell, if it gets you out of trouble in the bush, it's worth it. Just 
got my hand stuck on the jack. See, high lift jacks are great, but they can be a bit deadly. But there you see that bead, obviously broken. Now, a lot of the time you can just get on it with your boot and just chase it around. And there you go. Now to let the jack back down. There we go. Operate the jack in reverse. Now that is well and truly off the bead. There's a little stone in there. And what you're probably gonna wanna do is push down on that and just wipe away any mud with your fingers or with a uh, bit of rag. Just get in there and around the lip there. And just wipe it all out, try and stop it from falling inside the tire. And then once that's all cleaned out, it's time to reseat the bead. First thing you want to do, put that valve core back in. Hope you didn't lose it. Then we're going to put a lubricant around the rim where the bead's going to seat. Just makes it pop on nicer. Um, I recommend probably dishwashing liquid. That's the best thing if you're out on the tracks. Um, today I'm just going to use a quick squirt of WD-40. Um, but I did see a friend on Facebook the other week um, mention that WD-40 isn't that great for your tyres. So. I mean, if it's going to get you out of trouble, it's going to get you out of trouble, but dishwashing liquid, or hell, if you carry a proper bead lubricant, for whatever reason, you might be one of those guys with every tool in the truck, then use the proper bead lubricant, but yeah, quick squirt of WD-40 around there, and we're going to put it on with compressed air. WD-40. WD-40, just push down and... Well, don't get your WD-40, because I just told you not to use WD-40. Get your dishwashing liquid. Smear it around there with your finger if you have to. All right, the valve core is in. I obviously have a workshop compressor here, but you can do this with your 12 volt compressor and the fun part goes back on. There she goes. Now you just pump that bad boy up to your desired pressure and uh, hopefully you don't have any more leaks. If it's still leaking, well, you gotta do it again. Uh, you could use this um, to get the tire completely off the rim, which is exactly what I'm gonna do now with a couple of tire levers. I don't recommend doing that. Bugger that, it's a shit of a job. Especially if you've got big 33s, 35s, something like that. This is only a 27. You know what, stuff it. Just for your amusement, I'm gonna make a separate video on how to remove a tire from a rim using this method and a pair of um, tire levers. Well, in that case, I guess you should probably subscribe to the channel and um, down the track, I'll put up the video of me removing this tire from this rim with a set of tire levers. Once these new tires and the lift is on the Subi, we're gonna be getting that thing out in the bush a bit more. Um, I'll be posting heaps more tips and tricks on uh, camping, four-wheel drive maintenance. So subscribe, tell your friends, share it around, and I'll see you in the next video.